This is also an extremely egregious way to pervert our justice system by shutting down a civil matter and a person following the proper court process with retaliatory criminal proceedings in which only the police are complainants or witnesses. So let's read the statements that Sergeant Paul Bailey, oh, sorry, Brayley made in this police file. Then we'll see how he does when compared to the recorded phone call. Sergeant Brayley perused the documents further and discovered the documents had been served by or on behalf of Dan. The said documents were seized and closed with attachments by Sergeant Brayley. So right off the bat here in his statement, he says he seized the documents that which were, of course, legally served on the named defendant at their home. Hmm. Seized. Wow. Interesting. How if you're a police officer that you can call the police and have them seize your legally served court documents because you want them gone. Wow. Sergeant Brayley's contact with Dan. At 10.38 p.m., Brayley contacted Dan with the phone number provided on the face of the notice of claim. At first, Dan was verbally defiant with Sergeant Brayley. Then he says that I was verbally defiant at first. Wait, what? Verbally defiant? Okay, so if you listen to the whole call, am I verbally defiant? Uh, if so, uh, what is the timestamp on that? <laughs> this is all news to me. As their conversation continued, Brayley informed Dan that he, Brayley, retrieved the documents from the front porch. Brayley advised Dan that he, Brayley, would make the notice of claim available to the VCP legal department if so require. After a short time, finally Dan readily admitted to having attended residence in an attempt to serve the documents. Dan advised that even though Brayley had retrieved the documents, he still deemed them served. Brayley disagreed with Dan. Okay, I don't remember him disagreeing with me. In fact, I remember him saying I'm probably right and he doesn't want to get into the legalities of it, uh, which we did not. Dan went on to complain about the corrupt nature of the Victoria Police Department, who had declined to charge... Uh, that's news to me. I know I didn't say anything about the corrupt nature of Vic PD or anything about them declining to charge whoever this is. Sergeant Johnson of the Central Saanich Police Department, who had failed to investigate his complaint, started by the Office of the Police Complaints Commission. Dan also complained about the OPCC and the corrupt nature of all police. Now, this is interesting because... Well, I did accuse Sergeant Johnson of a poor investigation, and I did complain about the OPCC. I never, ever said anything about the corrupt nature of all police. In fact, I said the complete opposite. Sorry, were you a sergeant? Yes, I was. Sergeant, ba Paul. sergeant Bailey? Yes. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your professionalism. Um, no I am, problem, I, I will tell you right now, I do not hate police officers or law enforcement. What I do not like is when Canadian citizens have their rights and freedoms thrown out the door, thrown out like, like, like bathwater when, yeah. when real issues come up. And that's why we're here tonight, sir. I'm not here because, um, you know, the complaint process works, if you know what I'm saying. What the hell is this? Is this guy on drugs? He hears one thing, but reports the opposite. This is a police sergeant with very high powers of public trust. And this is something that I can't even make a complaint about to a legitimate agency. Sergeant Brayley's conversation with Dan ended with no resolution. Lastly, on this page, he says, the conversation ended with no resolution. What? He said I was doing the right thing and going about it the right way, or at least he thought or believed as such. So me going about it the right way, not doing anything wrong, is no resolution? Okay. So out of what little I did get out of this file, there includes this final update on the file, written by Corporal Patrick Bryan himself. You'll see he says... 
2017 0627. Charge not approved by Crown. File concluded here. And it's my belief that the copy of this page from the original file didn't transfer Corporal Patrick Bryant's tears that fell and watermarked the original documents. Or maybe the chief redacted those two. Yes, I'm sure Corporal Patrick Bryant was most upset when he found out that his first ever police file was a complete failure that fell flat on its face. And all it accomplished was a huge waste of taxpayer funds and resources. All in the name of retaliation of a victim following the proper court process. And lastly, I want to go into more detail about this specifically. How they decided to investigate. First off, they never contacted the accused or any of the accused witnesses. Normally, police ask both parties for their sides of the story and then investigate. Here they didn't do that. They didn't need to. The whole point of this was to get a charge approved, get a warrant, and ambush-style arrest me at my job. They do this because in their police system, the information they rely on is the police false narrative that starts in 2015. It details how I live in an apartment-style building and that I refuse to answer the door even though I'm home. I won't disprove this here. I actually have much better content on that in a future video. So for now, I'll just say that uh, it is an excuse to, instead of contacting me at my home, they go straight to my work, as Ron Kirkwood left details about the easiest way to find me via the name of my employer in my police file. So that was their plan all along. They don't need to interview me or get my side of the story because they don't need to investigate. They already made up their mind that they're going to get a warrant for my arrest, show up at my job in an ambush-style arrest, search me and cuff me in front of my boss and co-workers and take me away in the back of a marked police unit. Then, because they usually do this after the cutoff time to bring an arrest person to court, they hold me overnight in their jail cell, take me to court in the morning where I sit in leg shackles till about 3 p.m. and have my chance to be released. It goes on, but I digress. And finally, uh, the Crown decision to not approve of this? Wow, they actually got this right for once. Usually they approve everything, especially if it's with me. <laughs> Usually they trump up the charges so I stay in prison till I'm forced to hire a lawyer and make a plea deal. That's how we do it, folks. It's all been documented. So that's not the case here. So good for them on stepping up and doing the right thing here and not allowing the police to use our justice system for legal hijinks and having some fun screwing with an innocent person's life. I'll commend them for that. Anyways, folks, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of Central Saanich Police Department getting busted, playing legal hijinks, and trying to forward retaliatory criminal proceedings on an innocent person who is following proper court procedure. Leave a comment below. And remember, in all seriousness, if I ever go missing or disappear, now you'll know why. It's because of these police false narratives. But it doesn't end here. Oh no. No, no. I'll have plenty more on police false narratives coming over the next few months. So stay tuned. This is just the tip of the iceberg, folks. Thanks for watching.